welcome to study die casting solutions my name is bharat sharma and today we talk about the molten metal quality so already we have discussed a lot of about uh, this uh, melting safety and uh, molten metal so today we will talk about molten metal quality molten metal quality start with the quality of the purchased metal if poor quality metal is purchased more treatment will have to be done to improve the quality metal quality also uh, depends on the practice followed at the facility if high quality metal is purchased but is not handled properly the result is the same poor casting so after uh, completing this video uh, you can uh, able to state uh, uh, three guidelines to follow that ensure metal quality you can also able to explain how to restore the correct composition when metal analysis is uh, off composition and uh, you are able to identify the four type of impurity that may occur in molten aluminum die cast alloy and the sources of each you also can able to identify the technique that can be used to identify the different type of uh, impurities you can use this information uh, to uh, maintaining molten metal quality so uh, metal quality how you can maintain the metal quality so you should careful uh, melting practices with known acceptable condition of all materials charged into the furnace it is essential to achieve high melt quality suitable to produce a quality die cast product only metal of known composition metal that is uh, in, in uh, specification should ever be charged into the furnace and uh, there are three uh, these uh, guidelines to ensure metal uh, quality so bargain bias of uh, of specification material are most often more trouble than they are worth only charge is scrap of known origin such as trim scrap from the same alloy to avoid the contamination avoid mixing different scrap materials all scrap material including returns from the die casting operation process and oxide skin often have a die casting lubricant or other metal working uh, residues oxide and hydrogen are an additional source of metal contamination as are possibly unwanted temperature uh, elements restoring metal composition when metal analysis is uh, off composition the only way to restore the correct composition is to either add prime aluminum and or sufficient alloying element in the form of master alloy as required to restore the correct elemental level magnesium is the only refinable alloying component impurities there are principally three type of impurity that may exist in uh, molten aluminum die cast alloy first is hydrogen second is inclusion and third one is slug a fourth problem that can be encountered in a metallic element out of a specification or a trap elements if your material is out of a specification return it to your metal supplier so let discuss about the first impurity hydrogen hydrogen is the only gas that is soluble to any uh, appreciable extent in aluminum and this figure show the solubility of uh, hydrogen in both the liquid state and the solid state there is a large decrease in the solubility of hydrogen in the solid state if the hydrogen that may be present in the liquid state is not removed or dispersed during the solidification process the porosity may result So where does the hydrogen come from moisture humidity in the factory air can uh, decompose to its elemental form of hydrogen and oxygen by product of combustion combustion in fossil fuels fired furnace organic contaminant on scrap die casting release agent plunger loop residues fluxes almost any other material uh, that come in contact with the molten aluminum earlier the die caster did not worry about hydrogen the high rate of solidification in the pressure die casting process resulted in very dispersed and uh, very fine porosity the hydrogen had no chance to collect and grow into a large pore during solidification furthermore heavy vault casting often hit uh, hit the porosity hit the porosity within uh, provide the skin was not machined away 
today thinner section more intricate casting higher demands on quality and precision machining requirement have a place more emphasis on a pressure die casting to lower hydrogen and resultant porosity contents this figure show the traditional microstructure appearance of uh, porosity it is important to uh, distinguish shrinkage porosity from porosity due to hydrogen or other causes porosity can result also from other sources like air interruptment incomplete or improper venting uh, another one is lubricant uh, decomposition during solidification okay let's talk about the uh, inclusions so inclusion are solid particle that exists to uh, develop or become entrapped in the melt most are oxides aluminum oxides immediately upon exposure to air and it's impossible to create a flux oxide free aluminum melt so what are the sources inclusion arise from uh, melt oxidation scrap contaminants flux is desirable uh, additives such as alloy detroition of a refractory vessel used in aluminum melting and holding any tool used in melt practice skimmer puddler plunger shawls racks etc can also be a source of inclusion as uh, these are uh, repeatedly used in withdraw from the melt this tool will uh, inevitably retain oxide debris all solid charges of aluminum material intrinsically processes a thin layer of aluminum oxide skin during melting this aluminum oxide is perfectly stable and never breaks down another important inclusion which forms in c2 uh, or uh, by reaction in the melt is sludge which will be dealt with uh, later let's discuss about the type of uh, inclusions the following table present uh, of most of the type of inclusion that can exist in uh, uh, aluminum die cast alloy these inclusion included a wide spectrum of uh, density size and form such as skins discrete uh, particle and uh, mm, agglomerations oxide are most uh, pro prolific type of inclusion uh, spineless uh, which are double oxide of aluminum and magnesium exist in alloy where magnesium is present refractory inclusion composition include silicon carbide oxide etc arising from the deterioration of refractory vessels in aluminum melts that have been produced from prime in got aluminum carbide are often present in as uh, inclusions this is due to the electrolytic production process employed at the smelter when salt fluxes are employed in a fluxing process these fluxes which are based on a chloride and fluorides result in fluxing compound reactions and debris that produce liquid phase inclusions these are extremely difficult to remove by skimming they combine readily with the oxide and dross the resultant agglomeration is often very similar in density to molten aluminum so effect of uh, 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 inclusions so inclusion present in a melt and uh, in subsequent die cast product have many uh, detrimental effect inclusion are an uh, impediment to metal flow in extreme instance inclusion can result in lack of fill in the die cavity especially in thin sections inclusion have a negative effect on mechanical property resulting in lower yield and tensile strength elongation and impact resistance many inclusions are quite hard and impair machinability surface inclusion impact finishing operations such as uh, plating and painting anodizing etc inclusion are uh, preferential sites in uh, nickelite hydrogen porosity that is a hydrogen atom combined to a uh, form uh, of a hydrogen molecules on a internal surface this create a solid inclusion in melt okay let's discuss about the 
sludge the term sludge refer to the occurrence and the formation of intermetallic compound in the melt that contains the heavy metal iron manganese and chromium these sludge particles are extremely hard therefore uh, creating hard spot during machining which usually cause tool breakage this figure shows sludge particle in alloy microstructure usually uh, blocky and uh, polythrene shapes sludge formation how sludge form in melt why does sludge occur in the first place iron is an avoidable element present in die cast alloy iron has a positive effect in uh, retarding die soldering so a certain percentage of iron should be present to avoid soldering usually 0.8 to 1.1 percent manganese has a favorable effect on the form of iron intermetallic uh, uh, and uh, improve ductility chromium uh, though providing similar effect on its structure and the properties can also be in unwanted impurities in melt particle where the metal within the facility is constantly being uh, recycled even just a gradual build up on of uh, manganese and uh, chromium content is uh, invitable as neither element is uh, uh, refinable from the melt sludge factor sludge formation is dependent both on composition and temperature most die casters utilize a sludge factor that governs sludge formation if the sludge factor exceed 1.8 then they there is a uh, sludging tendency the sludge factor uh, you can calculate like this with the help of this formula another we have uh, this image uh, which describe graphically how the sludge factor work as you can see uh, the sludge factor actually present determines the minimum furnace holding temperature If the sludge factor is too high, as uh, in the second chart, then sludging will occur in the furnace. Note that uh, in this uh, next image, as the metal cools, the temperature at which it enters the short cavity or die, small sludge crystal can form in the ladle and uh, uh, in the short sleeve. In the final uh, image, despite the relative adverse effect of sludge on metal flow it should therefore be noted that sludge can form almost instantaneously if the temperature is low enough and the sludge formation is high enough sludge particle like all other inclusion are a hindrance to smooth metal flow sludge factor in melting and holding furnace it is important to determine sludge factor from composition not only in the melting furnace but in holding furnace as well most die caster will attempt to run uh, consistently with the sludge factor somewhat less than the nominal 1.8 once sludge does form it uh, settles to bottom of the vessel because of its density uh, so steers up the sedimented uh, sludge and re entrance particle into the melt where they may be uh, unlimitedly delivered to the die casting cavity during uh, ladling so how you can minimize the uh, sludge periodic furnace cleaning uh, practices including bottom uh, dragging should be employed in both melting and holding furnace to minimize the sludge accumulation obviously uh, charged material that might uh, contain unwanted iron manganese and chromium contain should be avoided once sludge form only holding for a uh, lengthy period of the time at uh, high temperature can uh, redissolve this sludge particle uh, this is risky in that the time and temperature involved will over pose other problem with additional hydrogen absorption and oxidation of the melt okay let's discuss about the uh, corundum the corundum is a refractory product which pose a considerable problem for the die caster corundum is a very hard very dense from the uh, dense from form of uh, aluminum oxide if it is make it uh, way into the die casting it will cause a hard spot this create machining difficulty tool breakage and poor strength property in the casting 
this image show a chunk of corundum which is the alpha aluminum oxide this form of aluminum oxide is very uh, heavy and uh, sinks to the bottom of the furnace as uh, despite uh, in this figure bath steering pumping or agitation plus tapping and pouring operation uh, can re entail uh, and train this uh, corundum particle into the metal stream and result in in, uh, in, in uh, inclusion in the die cast product corundum growth how uh, the corundum growth corundum growth uh, occurs on aluminum refractories at a high temperature at a high oxidation uh, potential when refractory brick or castable is porous when free silica is present electric furnaces are often prone to corundum build up uh, this image demonstrate the uh, conversion of a low cost brick which is a high in free silica into the alpha phase corundum product on the hot phase corundum removal corundum is extremely difficult to remove once it is formed and this image show a furnace that has its capacity severely reduced by corundum build up it is uh, certainly much easier to clean corundum uh, accretion from the furnace was during early stage but it's considerably care must be taken not to damage um, under uh, drilling refractory and uh, to thoroughly remove debris from the uh, cleaning operations now we talk about the uh, melt cleanliness uh, with so many impurities in molten aluminum melt uh, to be Uh, concerned with uh, how does one access melt cleanliness cleanliness there are several techniques that are real time on the shop floor and some laborious laboratory techniques in general quantitative assessment of a melt cleanliness is difficult so let's discuss about the hydrogen uh, determination actual hydrogen value can be obtained in real time using a uh, you know uh, ulse scan instrument as you can see in this image uh, while costly hydrogen content in uh, cubic centimeter or milligram hydrogen per 100 grams aluminum can be obtained in 15 minutes this principle involved is to measure the change in thermal conductivity when a carrier gas like argon absorb hydrogen from the melt through a special probe and a collector pin sample are another method for hydrogen determination the sample are taken in the plant and later analyzed in the laboratory with the vacuum fusion process in this process the volume of gas is liberated and measured during the melting of the pin a common to purely qualitative means of evaluating hydrogen porosity is by the use of the reduced pressure test as you can see in this image it is extremely important that the test should be performed with the utmost consistency the equipment also must be maintained in a good condition so a particular reduced pressure is achieved in a short period a result can be evaluated by observing the sample solidifying under pressure a mushroom head describe a high hydrogen gas content while a concave surface occurs when hydrogen is low samples may then be selected and compared with visual uh, progression yes different casting requirement tolerate different level of uh, acceptance not also the different level of reduced pressure achieved during the reduced pressure test can have a uh, decidedly different appearance with the same hydrogen level as you can see in this image the most progressive uh, uh, die caster will use the level uh, at least 26 mm uh, hg reduced pressure for their determination the density of the reduced pressure test sample can also be determined and used as a measure of porosity however the reduced pressure test does not determine hydrogen directly it is rather a measure of melt cleanliness as presence of inclusion will uh, nucleate porosity during the test therefore the reduced pressure test is actually a measure of general melt cleanliness and 
not hydrogen content melt cleanliness now we talk about the antifying inclusion uh, to actually antify inclusion and not just their presence requires laborious laboratory preparation of uh, uh, metallographic samples careful microstructural evolution is followed by such techniques such as uh, x-ray electron diffraction scanning electron microscopy or computerized analysis few diecaster have these technique available to them there are however a few shop floor technique that are helpful the first of these is a simple a fracture test by observing the fracture surface of a solidified cast sample under a low pressure microscope one can see the presence of inclusions one popular form of such test involve the k mold a step bar permit easy fracture of the knife point generally four sample of five fracture each are rate the inclusion rating determined by the number of uh, simple visual inclusion observed divided by 20 only micro is inclusion uh, about uh, uh, 400 microns or larger maybe so can be observed with the, this technique the trained operator can assess metal quality relative to uh, established process standard and determine Uh, if when further melt treatment is required to ready the melt of for transfer or casting other techniques uh, like uh, pot fa lais prefill and k mold so let discuss uh, about uh, this uh, um, pot fa and lais pot fa and lais techniques are different in their sampling procedure but both require similar laboratory analysis consequently they are not suitable for online melt quality determination determinations but are very useful in establishing process treatment and qualifications and this figure uh, pottery to uh, pottery the two techniques and uh, systematic of lis and the apparatus of uh, the pod fa in the first the lais or liquid aluminum inclusion sampler the sampling device is placed directly into the molten metal which is uh, aspirated into the test canister by vacuum the metal passes through a very fine test filter disc which uh, concentrate inclusion on the surface the pod fa or porous disc filtration apparatus is an external test which uh, pressurizes liquid metal sampled from the melt through a similar finer filter disc both technique then require uh, metallographic preparation and examination of the inclusion content content contained on the surface of the fine filter disc results are reported with the evaluation of an experienced technician in terms of uh, aerial fraction of inclusion observed as a function of uh, metal volume passing through the test filter the standard unit of measure is uh, millimeter square per kg Uh, both sampling technique however involve grab sample of uh, small melt quality uh, quantities uh, it's only about 1 kg so care must be taken in a proper sampling to be representative of the larger melt <coughs> here we have an example of a uh, uh, usefulness of this technique uh, uh, you can see this image the lais method has been employed to evaluate the elongation in 319 alloy as a function of a several melt treatments another image a die cast alloy melt has been examined using the pod fa technique before and after flux injection in a transfer ladle and also after subsequent filtration in a casting holding furnace the validity of the uh, both melt processes is improving the melt quality is demonstrated Okay so we have uh, uh, another test prefill test so the prefill foot printer uh, in this image uh, you can see uh, this 
device which provide a real time indicator of melt quality by measuring the weight of molten aluminum uh, flowing by gravity through the through a fine test filter as a function of time this shock flow test can be performed in less than 3 minutes and a load cell and electronics weighing the molten aluminum which flow into the collector pan allow online monitoring and quality control a flow curve is generated which can be compared uh, by benchmark curve against free pre programmed similar curve from a confidentially industry wide database for a given alloy and temperature some indication of uh, inclusion type can be uh, grant from the shape of the curve but as with the pod fa and lais technique subsequent quantitative inclusion analysis must be determined through a metallographic and image analysis techniques on the inclusion concentrated on the test filter disk another image uh, pod trace or prefill uh, flow curve with metal evaluated before and after a filter in a die cast holding furnace filtered metal demonstrate a greater volume of metal per unit time flowing through the test system than the unfiltered metal on the inlet side of the filter so we have another technique k mold technique this is a simple shaft floor foundry friendly test comprising a step chill mold with notch to permit easy fracture and examination of fracture surfaces operator can gain sufficient expertise in just a couple of day experience in looking at the fracture surface with the naked eye under good lighting or uh, with low power uh, portable microscope only macro inclusions or uh, discontinuities 60 80 microns or greater can be uh, discreened easily with the test Discontinuities on the fracture surface are counted as a function of the total number of samples investigated. Five bar of four fracture surface each. An index can be determined as the total number of discontinuities, inclusion or pores observed or the number of uh, discrepant samples divided by 20. The index number can then be compared to any standard previously established which governs the suitability of the metal uh, for making a particular casting. As usual, the technique can be used to establish a specific process parameter and any melt treatment necessary. This image display a several days uh, average result for unfiltered versus filtered metal as one example. Okay, now we come up to summary. The ultimate quality of a casting depends in part on the quality of uh, the metal. Following standard procedure can help reduce quality problem. There are four types of impurity that may occur in molten aluminum die cast alloy. It is important to know the source of each and technique to identify each in order to reduce the likelihood of their occurrence. So thank you guys. Thank you. I hope this will help you a lot to, to maintain your uh, melt quality. So keep learning till that. Thank you very much.